Lung Chin Man Appointment Controversy The Lung Chin Man Appointment Controversy occurred in Hong Kong in August 2008, when the former Permanent Secretary for Housing, Planning and Lands, Lung Chin Man, was named Deputy Managing Director and Executive Director of New World China Land Limited. There was widespread suspicion among members of the public that job offer was a quid pro quo for the favors he allegedly granted to its parent company, New World Development in WD in 2004. The Civil Service Bureau CSB, which was responsible for vetting the appointments of former civil servants against potential conflicts of interest, admitted to failing in their duty to consider all relevant factors. Background. In 2004, while Lu was Director of Housing, the government sold an unused private sector participation scheme project. The sale of the Hong Hong Peninsula HOS housing estate to NWD took place at less than half of the original asking price. In November 2005, Lu was criticized in an Audit Commission report for having exercised his discretionary power before conferring with other government departments in 2001. Henderson Land Development had been granted permission to exclude the public transport terminus from the gross floor area in its building plan for their grand promenade development, thus gaining additional revenues of HK3 dollars, 2 billion as a result of the decision. The effect was to allow the addition of 10,700 square meters to the project. Procedural Rules Directorate officers wishing to take up outside work, paid or unpaid, full-time or part-time, during their final leave period before their formal departure from the government, and slash or within a specified control period counting from the said departure, should apply for prior permission from the Secretary for the Civil Service SCS in accordance with detailed arrangements set out in CSB Circular No. 10-2005. According to procedures drawn up, civil servants of Loom's grade are subject to a 12-month sterilization period and required government approval to take up private sector posts within three years of leaving. Procedures laid down required that views from the relevant bureau be taken into account. Approval and Conditions The Secretary for the Civil Service, Denise Yu Chung Yi, signed off on the approval for him to take up the job after it passed through the Advisory Committee on Post-Service Employment of Civil Servants responsible for vetting the appointment. The Transport and Housing Bureau, the Development Bureau and Administrative Officer Grade Management were asked for their views. On receiving these submissions, the CSB prepared a paper for the Advisory Committee to facilitate their consideration. The view taken by the CSB was that Lu would oversee only mainland business of his future employer, and that bearing in mind he had ceased to be director of buildings for six years, and had left the post of permanent secretary of housing two years previously, his appointment was unlikely to present problems of conflict of interest. In order to address any potential public perception issue, Additional conditions were imposed in addition to the standard set of conditions. Accordingly, Lung's employment was to be confined to New World China land, not represent his employer in dealings with the government, would refrain from involvement in any Hong Kong-related dealings of his direct employer, and not to disclose sensitive or classified information to his employer. On 4 July 2008, the committee submitted its recommendation to the SCS to approve Loom's appointment, and the SCS duly gave her approval on 8 July, on the terms stipulated. Reaction For many citizens, the incident was proof that there was collusion between the government and big business. Controversies surrounded not only the suspicions of Loom's own conflict of interest, but also of the insensitivity of the committee, which recommended the approval for him to take up his new job with a HK3 dollars. 12 million pay packet, plus bonus, so soon after his retirement. Mr. Justice Pang Kin Ki, 
who chaired the vetting committee, was also himself criticized for conflict of interest for his close friendship with Loom. Political scientist Meingok said, it is inevitable that the public will consider the advisory committee to be just a rubber stamp when the approval rate was 100%. Albert Cheng commented, the controversial appointment is a political time bomb which threatens to seriously undermine the authority of the administration. Senior Non-Expatriate Officers Association Chairman Poon Waiming argued that the controversy arose from a lack of strict enforcement of the procedures and not their inadequacies. New World argued that they hired Loom in good faith after government clearance. Albert Chan of the League of Social Democrats and 50 members of the public filed a complaint with the Independent Commission against corruption days after his appointment became public. The Secretary for the Civil Service came under fire for approving an appointment that gives the strong appearance of a conflict of interest. Chief Executive Donald Tsang asked the Secretary for the Civil Service to account for the approval process in a written report. On 13 August 2008, Apple Daily reported that the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office had asked the Hong Kong government to solve the problem on or before 24 August, and that the best way forward would be for Loon to resign from NWD. However, the standard reports that the Apple assertions could not be substantiated. However, an unnamed top Beijing official in Hong Kong was quoted in the South China Morning Post as warning, without specifically identifying the subject he was referring to, that conflicts among interest groups may threaten Hong Kong's stability if not properly handled. SCS Report On 15 August, the Civil Service Bureau issued the report requested by Donald Tsang, where they admitted that they had not considered Loon's role in the Hong Kong Peninsula affair when approving his application, and was thus not mentioned in the report to the Advisory Committee or the subsequent submission to the SCS. Although the Works Branch and the Transport and Housing Branch suggested that there may be a public perception issue, neither believed that the appointment was likely to create a negative impact or embarrass the government because his role was in mainland subsidiary. Donald Tsang asked the SCS to reassess the approval and submit a report to him. New World Development announced in the early hours of 16 August that Lu had resigned from his post and would not be seeking compensation from the government for its inappropriate handling. Lu professed his shock to learn that officials had not considered his role in the Hong Kong Peninsula sale and tendered his resignation. It was understood that the reassessment by the SCS would take place notwithstanding Lu's resignation. Political fallout. You lost credibility within and outside government circles as a result of the case, but said she hoped to stay in her position. Commentator Chris Yu stated that Tsang's request for the Bureau to do their job again deals a body blow to the authority and image of Yu and the Bureau. A SCMP editorial criticized the glaring lack of political sense of some of our senior officials. Lee Wing Tat said it was clear from the episode that the government considered the public stupid. Albert Cheng pointed to the composition of the four-man advisory committee, saying that issues would have been flagged had it included pan-democrats instead of just establishment figures. There were only muted calls for secretary's resignation. Commentators suggested that parties feared that demands for use resignation would alienate civil servants in the forthcoming LEGCO elections. The next day, Donald Tsang confirmed that Denise Yu would not have to resign. He was satisfied with her apology and with the explanations offered by her. Tsang ordered a committee, of which Yu was to be a member, to be set up to perform a sweeping review of the system to process applications for former civil servants. This sparked fears among civil servants that their job opportunities after retirement would be curtailed. In an op-ed 
Christopher Chu states that Liu was quickly sentenced by the court of public opinion and was dangerously close to mob rule. The facts of the case rested on guidelines introduced in January 2006 which elevate public opinion to the level of tyranny and whose rigid entry and exit criteria from the civil service stand in the way of modernizing the civil service. Equals equals references equals equals.